In recent years, there have been frequent inquiries as to why China, the world's second largest economy, heavily relies on imported chips. Why haven't chips developed in China over the past few decades? Well, the culprit behind this heartbreaking history may come as a shock to you. It was not the Americans, but rather a Chinese individual named Chen Jin who hindered the development of China's semiconductor industry. Born in 1968, Chen Jin displayed remarkable intelligence and excelled academically during his youth. He earned the opportunity to study abroad with his outstanding academic achievements, and pursued advanced technological education in the West. In 1997, Chen Jin obtained a PhD in computer engineering from the University of Texas at Austin, a prestigious institution in the United States. With his impressive qualifications, he joined Motorola, an American company, as a senior principal engineer, and eventually rose to the position of chip design manager. He led the development of multiple integrated chip products and managed significant projects. At that time, Motorola was among the Fortune Global 500 companies and a leader in global chip manufacturing. Working in such a colossal company was a dream come true for many people. However, in 2001, Chen Jin unexpectedly gave up a promising future in the United States and chose to return to China. His return was warmly welcomed, as overseas students who forsake high salaries to contribute to their homeland receive considerable praise. Yet, in light of subsequent events, it appears that Chen Jin harbored ulterior motives for coming back. Initially, with his high educational background and impressive resume, he gained popularity in the Chinese scientific research community and was regarded as a young leader in technology. The chip industry in China was in a desolate state, desperate for talent. Chen Jin received numerous invitations from various research and development companies. He chose to work at a sizable research institute as the head of chip research and development. Chips were considered the industrial grain of the nation and the cornerstone of the information age. China was in dire need of chips, and countless eyes were fixed on Chen Jin. Unexpectedly, under his leadership, the chip research project, originally planned to take four years to complete, was finished in just one year and four months. In 2003, Chen Jin unveiled this chip, named Hanshin 1, at a press conference. It adopted advanced international processes and was independently developed in China, reaching the same level as chips produced globally. The introduction of Hanshin reassured the Chinese people. It was not only due to its technological achievement in synchronizing with developed countries, but also because Chen Jin had truly created an incredible miracle. Researching chips in Europe and the United States typically required teams of two to three hundred people, and took at least four to five years to develop a chip. However, Chen Jin's team consisted of no more than five people, and they completed the research task that matched the level of developed countries in a short span of 16 months. Therefore, Chen Jin's research achievement was astounding, and everyone in the team became national heroes, especially Chen Jin himself, he basked in glory and held multiple positions becoming the dean of the School of Microelectronics at Shanghai Jiao Tong University, and the CEO of the Shanghai Silicon Intellectual Property Trading Center. He shouted a stirring slogan, to let every Chinese person have a computer with, Chinese chips, making it no longer an unattainable dream. The Chinese people became impassioned under his slogan, praising him as the, father of chips, and calling him the, pride of the nation. With the release of Hanshin 1, subsequent versions such as Hanshin 2 and Hanshin 3 began to be planned. The government provided Chen Jin with sufficient funding for these projects, as he applied and received a research grant of 1.1 billion renminbi. This amount was a considerable sum 20 years ago, indicating the level of attention China bestowed upon him at that time. However, is Chen Jin truly as remarkable as he seemed? Some industry insiders found it strange how he managed to complete chip development in such a short time. But the few voices of doubt were quickly drowned out in the wave of jubilation. It was not until 2006 when the truth was exposed, causing a global shock. The so-called Hanshin 1 turned out to be an outright colossal fraud. What exactly happened? In today's video, let's discuss the biggest scandal in China's scientific research community. This self-proclaimed chip expert deceived China out of 1.1 billion renminbi, halting the development of China's chip industry for 13 years. So, how did he manage to deceive over a billion people in China? Okay, in today's video, let's dive deep into the biggest chip scandal in China's history. Let's get started. 
That year, a mysterious individual posted an article on a forum at Tsinghua University titled The Dark Truth of Hanshin, pointing fingers at Chen Jin, claiming that the chips he developed were completely fraudulent. After an investigation by relevant authorities, the shocking truth about Chen Jin's deception was exposed. He had someone purchase Motorola chips from the United States, removed the brand name, and rebranded them with the label Hanshin, thus giving birth to Hanshin 1. Furthermore, upon testing, it was discovered that Hanshin 1 was fundamentally non-functional. So how did Chen Jin manage to deceive everyone? He downloaded a section of source code online and applied it to the chips, giving them basic functionality, but limited to that. For example, from 2003 to 2006, the Hanshin 1 MP3 player could only play three songs in a loop because the source code at that time contained only three songs. Chen Jin's credentials were also found to be falsified. While he had previously worked as a senior electronics engineer at Motorola, he presented his resume to Shanghai Jiao Tong University as a senior director engineer in the semiconductor headquarters. This indicates that the Hanshin fraud incident was not a spur of the moment act but a premeditated scheme. The Chinese government responded to this incident by removing Chen Jin from all positions and reclaiming the research funding. However, this cunning fox had already secretly fled to the United States after being caught red handed. His company was left deserted, a mere shell. The impact of this fraud was extremely detrimental. Chen Jin deceived China's research funds, not conducting any research for many years, which severely hindered the progress of chip development in China. He also tarnished the image of the Chinese scientific research community, and many people's confidence was shattered. People no longer trusted the authenticity of domestically developed chips, resulting in a lack of interest and progress in this field, trailing behind Western countries by 13 years. This incident even affected research on other chip series. Many people, who were unaware of the facts, mistook the genuine domestically developed Lungsun 1 chip from the Chinese Academy of Sciences as the fraudulent Hanshin, making it challenging for Lungsun to enter the market. Chen Jin's Hanshin scandal is considered the biggest disgrace in the Chinese scientific research community. Looking at it now, the road for Chinese chips has truly been arduous. Not only have they faced external restrictions, but they have also been stabbed in the back by their own people. However, even under tremendous pressure, there is still a group of individuals who are struggling to support the new hope for Chinese chips. Huang Lingyi, known as the mother of Chinese Lungsun, broke the US technological blockade in 2018 and successfully developed Lungsun 3 at the age of 84. This chip made it possible for the high speed train Fuxing Hao to be 100% domestically produced and enabled the BIDA system to be equipped with Chinese chips. Hu Weiwu, only 34 years old, is the head of the Lungsun series in China. He has led the development of the Lungsun 1, minus 2, and minus 3 series processors. Lungsun 1 put an end to China's history of coreless computer series, and Lungsun 2 set a precedent for core technology licensing to foreign countries. Huang Qianqian, at the young age of 28, has become a doctoral supervisor at Peking University's School of Information Science and Technology, the youngest in China. Her research focus is on the development of domestic chips. She collaborated with SMIC on the development of the world's first complementary tunneling device integration technology. She also participated in Huawei Hisilicon Semiconductor Chip Research and is known as the Chip Goddess. In 2019, at the Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers Young Achievers Award Ceremony, 30-year-old Huang Qianqian was the only Asian recipient. Overall, there are still batches of passionate and heroic individuals in China who bring hope of rising against adversity. Today, we are in an unprecedented era, and China has undergone earth-shaking changes. All past setbacks and detours have been lessons and experiences. Well, thanks for your watching, and please be free to put your comments below and share your insightful ideas. Please keep following our channel and like our videos. I am Tech Teller, the person to tell you the opinions that are worth spreading every day. Thank you so much for your continuous support. Your precious time with us is highly appreciated. See you.